Thank you for joining me this afternoon. We will be reviewing how to proof and submit pages in the Memory Book Online program. This webinar will be approximately 20 to 30 minutes long. You will be able to review the topics we're covering today in the manual starting on page 201 in the design and creation section. So once you've got all your pages created, um, you'll need to go here in the page ladder and complete each page. But there's some things you need to do before you can do that. So let's review our pages, uh, go over the pre-flight panel so that you can run your spell check and make sure things are like you want them when you get before you get them completely submitted. So you'll go to the design, a new page designer, and you'll just, you can go down through here page by page, and you'll want to go over here to the bottom right corner and click on the little lines in the circle. And the triangle with the exclamation point, it brings up the pre-flight panel. <clears throat> so from here, you can run spell check and you can also see if there's any incomplete elements. And an incomplete element is maybe a text box or an image box that's back in the background that you didn't, maybe you use last year's head, um, templates and so you didn't change any of the text in a text box it's going to think that you needed to change something and so it's going to call it an incomplete element so first off i'm going to run spell check and right off the bat here in my heading i haven't got fifth grade spelled correctly well it's here's here's the correct spelling so you can click on that and change it's also going to pick up names if you've typed names in, and they'll have a little line under them, a red line. None of those lines print. It's um, just letting you know that there's something on the page that isn't spelt correctly. And of course, it can't differentiate between a, a word and a name. So it's going to bring that to your attention. So now I've got my spell check done. And now I need to check for incomplete elements. So on page 18, I don't see anything here. It's not giving me any warnings. But here on page 19, I do have one error. And you see the one here. And it's telling me where it is. An image element remains unedited. So if you'll notice here, you click on the text that it brought this yellow box to our attention. Let me make up my screen just a little bit bigger. Well, that didn't work. <clears throat> Let me zoom in. That was what I need to do. Bring my free play panel back up. Page 19, I have one error, so I'm going to click on that. So if you'll notice here, it made a yellow box around this, and we have a little triangle with the exclamation point. Well, if you grab your flow panel, you'll see that there is a an empty image box back behind there. So I'm going to click undo so I can. So that helped me find it. So now I'm going to. highlight it, and hit delete on the keyboard. And then that went away. Now you always want to make sure that it wasn't something important that you needed there. So now I need to refresh. And you can refresh here, or you could click the Save button. And so now there aren't any error messages. So now we can go to the page ladder and we could click complete. Let me get this to fit. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to my plan, go to page ladder. It's asking me if I want to save it before I leave, and I do. So now I can click complete on each of these pages. And my next option would be submit or return. But I'm not going to submit anything until I keep going here. And so 
When you try to click complete here in the page ladder and you come up with incomplete elements, um, it's going to give you some um, messages that uh, you need to take care of some things. So let me go down through here. Now on this page, I don't have any spelling errors. There isn't much to check. But if you'll notice, you can't see the text very well, the names very well. So I want to go in and I want to fix this. I have added this transparent white box behind the names and the uh, pictures over here. And that does help me to see the words a little bit better. But ideally, we would go back and we would reset the flow and we would maybe make these names a little bit larger. And that might be something you want to address whenever you're creating your pages. So since this one is completed, we'll need to go back to our page ladder and we'll click return. And that's going to basically release the page out of the complete status so that we can go in and edit it. So if these were marked as complete, a, a staff member could not go in and edit the pages. Since you're an advisor, you can go in and you can um, fix these things. But I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, box. And I'm going to put it over here behind my words and my pictures over here. Now, if you wanted to make it a little bit darker, I've just added a white shape box and I've gone in under the formatting and I've changed the transparency on it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit less transparent. So down to 20. And now you can really see those names a lot better. And we do have to put a lot of books on hold because you can't read the text. Now another option would be, if you didn't want to add that transparent box, is to click on the flow panel and you can go up here to the flow options and we're going to expand it. But once you've expanded it, you, are, you aren't able to, to um, flow into those image boxes anymore. They're all just separate elements. So what I would do is select the text here and it selected my pictures too, so you kind of have to fine tune that. And then I'm going to change the color of my text to white. And sometimes that helps if it's a really dark background and you can see it better. And you can also, once you've got that um, all expanded, you can go in and you can increase the size of your font if you wanted to and maybe make it bolder. So your expanding is another option. So I'm not going to run any spell check on this page. And here in my pre-flight panel, I don't have any errors. Page 20, there's zero errors. And then page 21, I have zero errors. Errors. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to go back to, your, to the uh, page ladder, and you could mark it complete there, or you can mark it complete here. So this might be easiest to do that here in this area if you're going down through here page by page. Now another thing you'll need to do before you can submit these pages would be to look at a PDF proof. So when you're here in this pre-flight area, you can always click on proof again. It's going to bring up a PDF of both pages and you can actually look and see how it's going to look printed. And these dotted lines, that's the approximate trim line. So you will have to look at a proof before you can submit the pages. So that's one way to look at the proof. You can also click on this little printer icon up here where it says preview page. And then you can, uh, it will do the same thing. It'll create, create a PDF proof of that page. Okay, so I'm going to go to my next two pages. Now, if you'll notice here, uh, when you're creating your book, this blue line is the, what we call the safe area. So anything that's inside of this blue line is not going to get trimmed off. Anything outside of this red line will get trimmed. So the, just the very top letters of the student life 
is going to get trimmed off. So you would want to um, remove this background. It was placed as a background. So I'm going to remove the background and I'm going to go over to the image tab and I'm going to pull that image over separately. And I'm going to just go ahead and place it here within this safe area. And then if I wanted to add something behind it, I can always choose a background color that might coordinate with it. And that might make it look uh, less than, you know, like it's just plopped in the middle of the page. So I'm just going to choose something that might look good with it. Just go with something like that. So you want to really keep that in mind when you're placing your little ads that um, maybe the parents have gone in and created or if they've made like some senior pages or student pages that are that have text on the edges. You really want to watch how you're placing those because anything here close to this this red line is there's a possibility it's going to get trimmed. So over here in my pre-flight panel. I'm on page 22 and there aren't any errors there, but I'm going to go to page 23 and there's five different errors here. Um, this is this congratulations graduating tigers. If I ran spell check on it, it wouldn't pick that up. So if you found a spelling error in that image, you would need to go to the original image and correct the spelling and upload it again and place it on the page again. And if you'll notice, you see the little triangles with the boxes. So I'm going to click on my five errors. And the first one I'm going to click on, OK, it's an image box. And it's back behind everything. So I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And here, it's highlighted this image box. And it's back behind here. And you get this quite a bit whenever you have image boxes on the page. And then you maybe try to bring over an image that won't fit in that box. It lands on top of it. And you feel like, oh, that looks good. Well, it's not in the image box. So that's why the program's picking it up. So you'd have to delete these image boxes. And then if you wanted a red border on the picture, like you see here, then you would need to go up, select the image, and go up to your stroke and add the stroke and choose the color. So let's go to my next error. And it's the same thing. And this isn't unusual. Um, this is a text box back behind everything. I'm just going to move my tiger over if I can. And see it's a text box that's there. And I hit undo so that my image stays where it is. Go back to this, my errors, and a text box. And I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. I think I have one more to do. OK, there's the image box back behind that. So now to get the page like I wanted, I'm going to go ahead and select my images, go here to my stroke, and choose my color. OK, so I think I have that the way I want it. There's no more errors here, so I'm going to mark complete. And on 23, I'm going to mark complete. So now I'm going to go to my plan. And I'm going to pretend that I have all my pages like I want them, and they're ready to submit. So if you're at this point, then you can always run a PDF proof. Maybe you need to have an administrative person proofread it or look at it, uh, you can go here to the plan and under the print icon, when you click print all, it generates a PDF and you can download and save that PDF to your computer. So then you could email it to your uh, administration or you could print it out. And sometimes it's just easier to maybe catch mistakes if you've printed it out and you could, you know, circle the mistake and then come back in here. Now, remember, if you want to correct that mistake, you need to click return so that it releases that page so that you can go in and you can edit it again. 
So now I want to submit the pages. So if you've gone down through your pre-flight and you've gone through and completed everything and you're good to go and you've checked a proof, you can click here and this will select all the pages, but I don't have all my pages ready, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to check these boxes here. So this lets you submit several pages at a time. So the next action I want to do is submit. And it's asking me if I want to submit them. I'm going to say OK. And here they're telling me that I may have some more work to do. OK, so page 18 and 19, there's um, a print icon next to the page. Please review your page before submitting. Click the print icon next to the page image. So we did not look at PDF proofs on those two pages, so it's not letting me submit those pages. So what we can do is click OK, and we can look at your PDF proof from here, or you could go back to the pages section and look at both pages at the same time. Here it brings it up one at a time. But I know that's kind of a pain in the neck, but it's our way of knowing that you've reviewed the page one last time and that you're ready to submit them. Okay, so all of my options have gone from the side here. I don't have any more buttons. If you'll notice here, these that are in progress, you can click complete. And then once you click complete, you could click submit or return. So all the options are gone here and these six pages are ready for us to um, review. Now we won't review any of the pages or print any of the pages until your whole book is submitted. Okay, once you've submitted your your whole book, all your little borders around the edges are black and you have all your buttons um, have disappeared, then you'll need to email your customer rep, let them know that you've submitted them. Whenever we a book is submitted, we get a message through the program that lets us know that that book's ready for production. And so once we put the book into production, you will receive an email that will have all of the details, like how many pages, how, how many copies, and so on and so forth that you can review. Now, if you see a mistake on there and you need to make a correction, you'll need to let us know right away. And if the book is already in the production phase in the plant, there may be a charge to stop that book to make the correction. So it's always important to make sure you, you double check your book before you submit it and it's like you want it. And I think about 10 days after the submission, you'll receive the actual invoice. Does anyone have any questions? You can type them here in the chat bar and I'll be happy to go over it. Okay, it doesn't look like I have any questions. Okay, I guess I'll wrap it up then. Once again, thank you for joining me. I hope you found this webinar helpful when submitting your pages. If you have questions, please feel free to call technical support or your customer service rep for help. We look forward to receiving your books and enjoy seeing all your creative ideas. Thank you, everyone.